Recall back when we started developing models earlier in the class, and we were focusing on the task of regression. One of the first models we started with was actually just the constant model, which predicted the mean value of the response variable y. We could apply that same reasoning here as well to actually get a pretty reasonable starting model, and that is the constant model. So in this part of the notebook, I'll actually build on that idea. So we'll first develop the constant model, and then we can partition our data into segments across the x-axis, in this case, the mean radius, and then construct constant models for each of those segments. And that'll move us in the direction of the logistic regression model. So let's walk through how we do that. So here again is the video that I am now recording. One of the first steps, as I said before, was to just predict the mean value of the response variable. In this case, that response variable is malignant or benign. And so the mean value is, is going to be a number between 0 or, and 1. So we can take the mean of the response variable, which is 0 0.38. That is the proportion of tumors in our data set, which are malignant, and is an empirical estimate of the probability that a tumor would be malignant if drawn from the same population that this data set was constructed. So we can use that number, 0 0.38, as a constant in our constant model, which will predict for any input that the probability that that tumor is malignant as 0 0.38. And we can plot this model. Not surprisingly, the constant model is a horizontal line. For any input along the x-axis, it will predict the same value of 0 0.38. Now, this is not a great model, but it's actually a pretty good baseline, and it is a reasonable estimate for the probability that a tumor is malignant based on the data that we've seen. Now, we can improve this model by defining a constant model for different ranges of mean radius. So we could split this, this plot at different points along the x-axis and construct a mean for each of those regions. So let's do that now, and we'll see that this actually gives us a constant model that is conditioned on a range of values for the mean radius. So let me walk through the process of doing this. So first I'm going to construct a set of 15 splits from 6.5 to 28.5 along the x-axis, the mean radius of our data. Now for each of these splits, I'm going to look at the data that is the x values that live inside of that split, and I'm going to take the corresponding y values for those x values and take the mean of those y values, which is going to give me the constant that corresponds to that segment of the x-axis, or the mean radius of, of each of the tumors. And so that's going to give me a set of constant models, one for each split. And I can now plot this sequence of constant models, and it looks like the following. So here are these uh, dotted uh, green lines uh, are, are the split or the partitioning of the, the mean radius. Then within each of these splits, we've computed the proportion of the tumors that were malignant. So in this case, in this split here from 11.21 uh, to 12.78, in that region, we've calculated the proportion of the tumors that were malignant. Uh, and that proportion was 0.074. And so we would do that for each of these regions and get a, a horizontal line, a constant model that is conditioned on a particular segment of the x-axis. Now this is a better model of our data. First, it is bounded between 0 and 1. Second, you'll see that on the left, when the, the mean radius of the tumor is relatively small, uh, it approaches 0, and in fact is 0, so the probability that it's malignant for very small tumors is, is uh, 0. And then as we go to the far right, as the tumors become much larger, the probability of being malignant increases to 1. Uh, and then in this middle region where the, the tumors, some of the tumors are malignant and some are not, uh, even at the same size, uh, we, we see the proportion uh, moves between 0 and 1. So we, we have values like uh, right around mean radius of 15 has about 0.55 uh, as the proportion of tumors that were malignant within this the split of the data. So it's a reasonable model, but it actually has a big flaw. And if we were to try to do the same thing with multiple features, not just the mean radius, but many other features, the number of splits would grow exponential with the number of dimensions in our feature space. So it's not very computationally efficient. 
And even worse, you might actually find that in many of the splits, there's no data at all. So actually, even in this example here, this split uh, on the, 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 the right here had just one data point. Had we divide this space even further, it's possible even for this one dimensional problem that we'd have had uh, no data within one of the splits. When there's no data, then we have no way to estimate what the, the constant value of that model should be within that region. So we'd like to improve upon this model, and we'll do that by using logistic regression. But before we do that, I thought it would be neat to introduce another widely used model, actually a non-parametric model, for solving this kind of problem. I mean, that, that is the nearest neighbor model. The nearest neighbor model is actually a very simple model. The way it works is when trying to make a prediction, it finds a data point that is closest to the point where we're trying to make the prediction. So if I was trying to make a prediction for a tumor that was right here, somewhere between 22.27 uh, and 23.09 uh, millimeters in mean radius, then I would look at the adjacent points, and maybe not one, but I could look at k of the adjacent uh, points, and take the mean uh, response value, the mean y, for those k nearest neighbors. And so what's convenient about this is I no longer have to partition my space uh, in advance into these separate splits. I'm given a new test point if I want to know, if, you know a particular point here. So for example, if I had a tumor that, that had a radius of uh, 16.85, I might again look at the adjacent points here and here, and then construct the mean response, which might be somewhere around here. So this technique is convenient because I can apply it in higher dimensional spaces and I don't have the problem of having splits with no data inside of them. So let me walk through how to use it. So here's a short implementation of the K nearest neighbors uh, classifier. Uh, what it'll do is it'll take in a test point where I want to make a prediction, my entire training data set, my X and Y values, and a, a hyperparameter K, which determines the number of nearest neighbors that I'd like to use when making my prediction. So what I'll do is I'll compute the distance between my x and all of my training data. And so I'm doing this on the first axis, so the, the element-wise distance between x and each of those data points. And then what I'll do is I'll take the mean of the uh, nearest, the, the k smallest distance points from my test point x. And so I'll take the mean of the y values for those, and that will be my prediction. So the really simple, short implementation of k-nearest neighbors. This is actually uh, a widely used model, and so it's built into scikit-learn, but I thought it might be a little more uh, instructive to actually see an implementation. So I have one here. And so now we can make a plot of the k-nearest neighbor predictions. All right, so this red line is the model, the prediction from the k-nearest neighbors model. Uh, you'll notice that it's it's a little bumpy. Actually, in my uh, plot here, I've chosen the 91 nearest neighbors. Uh, so it's actually, a, a, I'm choosing a larger number of nearest neighbors, not five, not one, but 91. Uh, that will make the plot a bit smoother. If I had chosen uh, three or five, then as I move between this region here, it's possible that the the, the red line might actually bounce up and down quite a bit. So it, it would have higher variability. So by, by picking a larger number of nearest neighbors, I get a smoother line. The K nearest neighbor model is actually related to the kernel regression model that we actually discussed earlier in the class. But here we're using something slightly different than a kernel because we're considering the K nearest points. So that allows the size of the kernel sort of to adapt to the density of data at any point in space. So I thought it would be neat to show you the K nearest neighbors classifier since it is one of the more widely used traditional methods for non-parametric classification. Now you'll notice that both the k nearest neighbors classifier as well as the model where we split the x-axis and, and predicted a constant within each split all have this characteristic pattern where they're, they're, they start low with low probability and then they, they gradually ramp up and then they transition to a higher probability. And so th this shape is sort of like a sigmoid and that is kind of the, the basis for the logistic regression model that we'll talk about next.